guys, your tech admin here. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to clone a hard drive. Now, I've uh, I've shown how to clone a hard drive in the past on this channel, but I didn't really go into much detail about the whole process. I just kind of showed the drive being cloned. So this time, I'm going to do a bit more of a thorough video. Now, there are tons of ways to clone hard drives. Um, one of the most popular being to use Norton Ghost. Um, I'm not very familiar with Norton Ghost, but I am going to show you how to do it uh, for free with a Linux based utility called Clonezilla in the Normi Terrible Handwriting. Um, this isn't a recent version of Clonezilla, this is one I've had for several years now, and this is actually the same one used in the previous video. Um, I haven't even looked at the newer versions and don't even know what the difference is uh, and don't care because. I've used this disk several times and it's always worked and I've never had trouble with it, so uh, why upgrade it if I don't need to? There you go. Um, we're going to be cloning the uh, the second drive in my desktop PC. Um, and it's just a drive I use to store video clips from um, various things. There's some movies on there that I've ripped and uh, video clips from some... Uh, YouTube videos and just just a bunch of stuff like that. Nothing nothing too special, but it's a smaller drive, about a hundred and six hundred and twenty gig, I think. And um, I've recently come across a larger drive of comparable um, performance, so you know why not upgrade? Um, the PC we're going to be using to clone the drives is this uh, little Inspiron 530S here. Um, this isn't actually my machine. It's actually um, my father's machine, but it's in here being worked on. It's you know fairly easy to get the side off of it, so I figured why not just use it to clone the drives. Um, so the the drive that I'm cloning to is already in the machine too, so that's a bonus. Um, I just got to remove the system drive and um, pop my my other drive in in its place. So. Um, First, I gotta take the drive out of my machine down there, so that'll be the first thing I do. So, hang on just a second. Jump cut. So, I didn't feel like disconnecting my machine, um, so I just kind of pulled it out a bit and took the side panel off. Uh, the drives are fairly easy to get out of this machine anyway, so there's no real point in putting it up on the desk. Um, when you're doing anything inside of a computer, always make sure you disconnect the power. That is very common sense. Um, don't go messing around the machine without unplugging it first, even if it's just something quick. Also, hold the power button down to drain the remaining power out of the PSU. Um, because the capacitors will hold power and you can still damage stuff that way. So, um, this machine has these quick release drive bays, which is really nice. This is the drive here. All I gotta do is pull the data, pull the power, that, stuff those out of the way, grab the sides, and just kind of Whoop, pull it out just like that. Um, and then it just kind of clips on. You kind of pull these up, and it's hard to do with one hand. And it falls right out like that. So there's the drive. It is a dust covered um, Samsung drive. How big is it? Was I right? Was it 120 gig? Um, no, it's actually an 80 gig drive, so it's even smaller than I thought. So. I don't even know what I have here. Okay, so we're going from an 80 gig drive to a 120 gig drive. Both of them are 7200 RPM, so they should be comparable quality or performance at least. Ugh, very dusty. So we're going to go ahead and pop this one whoop, into this little dill. I'm going to lay it over to do this. Also, disconnect power. Drain power. You see how it lights up a bit? Because there's residual power. These little thumb screws, I hate these things, but I guess I'm just spoiled to my latch release desktop case. Because that's how you, all cases used to be. With the screws, that just slides off like that. And I haven't got around to cleaning the inside of this machine yet. So as you can tell, um, but, these, I guess this machine isn't really newer at this point, but this machine is a lot easier to work in than the older compact Dells the, uh, that had that clamshell design. Those were a 
pain in the neck to work with. Okay, so the top drive is the system drive, which is the one we need to pull. Okay, so we're going to pull the power here, data, and we're not even going to bother pulling it out of the drive bay there. We're just going to slap the clone hard drive on top and try to do this with, I don't know how I can put this in with one hand. It's going to be a bit hard, but I'm going to attempt it. No, I'm not going to do it. Um, jump cut. It's a good thing I had a jump cut there anyway because I needed to turn the flash back off. Um, it's really annoying when there's decent lighting and the flash is on. I only had it on because I was working down there in the shadow. But I got the drive hooked up now. I'm not going to put the cover back on because this should be a pretty cut and dry uh, in and out kind of thing. Um, remember when you're working with the case open, always be very mindful of where your hands are and what you're touching. You do not want to get shot. So that is now powered. Uh, we'll get our drive, or not our driver. CD here. And ignore the state of this keyboard. This is not my keyboard, and it is disgusting. But it is perfect for testing or small jobs like this. So. Actually, first I'm going to power it on. Get this keyboard out. F12 for boot devices. Yeah. Boot menu. It's F12 for Dell machines. It'll be different for your machine if it's not a Dell. Or it could be the same. All depends. Um, but generally you'll see it on the BIOS the first time. So you might have to start it up and try to quickly press it. Or press it and then reboot to do it the second time. Put your disk in. This thing always hangs up like that. Design. Um, but we're gonna go CD ROM, boot from CD, and you may not be able to hear it, but I can hear the disc spinning up. It takes it a while. There it goes. Oop. And here we are, Clonezilla. Um, we're going to go with the default settings here. I'm not sure which distro this is based off of, but if you've ever used Linux, you can obviously tell this is Grub. Um, it's been modified a bit, but it is in fact Grub. So we're going to be cloning from drive SATA drive 2, I think. Trying to verify this. Um, so, this top cable here is going to there. And this one is going to drive below it. That is SATA slot 4. I don't know why it's in slot 4. It should be in slot 2. So, we're cloning from SATA 4 to SATA 1. Or say to zero, probably. Um, English. Um, key maps fine. Some beautiful stuff going on there. Um, start clonezilla. Device, device. Second option. Okay. Um, choose your own following wizard. I always use beginner mode, I believe. Um, so, we're going to do a local disk to local disk clone. Alright, and we're cloning from the 80 gig drive to the... So this is the source, and this is the destination. Um, press enter. Make sure you want to continue. Yes, enter. Are you sure you want to continue if you go on? The original data existing on the target device will be destroyed. Yes. And now it is. Oh, you want to clone the bootloader? Um, no, because there isn't one. Now we'll start to clone the data to the target machine. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And 
away it goes. And I shall pick up after it has finished. Alright, so this is just about done now. And for some reason, Clumsil has a um, habit of always saying failed when it gets done for me. Um, it's always done that. I don't know why, but it actually doesn't affect it. Um, so, what I do here, it says press enter, but that doesn't work. You just power off. Um, and that may just be um, a side effect of having an older version, or maybe a bug or something, I don't know. It's always done that, and it's always cloned the drive perfectly anyway. But um, the next step now is, since we're cloning a smaller drive to a bigger drive, is to um, extend the partition to make use of that uh, extra space. So, um, in order to do that, the best way to do it is to use an Ubuntu Live CD. Um, or a, uh, a USB boot disk, but for some reason this machine does not like USB sticks. Um, it fails to boot from every time saying uh, something like boot failed. I'm not sure why it does that, but it does. So, because of that, I'm going to be busting out the trusty old uh, live CD. And this was actually the last live CD I, I bought. Um, after this, I started using exclusively uh, USB sticks to install Ubuntu. Probably not good for the disk to let it slide like that. But, we shall boot from the disk, and trust me, I'm gonna cut that part out because it's gonna take forever. And we shall pop Clonezilla out. And go in there. And boot the CD. And I shall resume once it's done. Let me make sure it boots first though. Uh, it should be booting. Yep, there it goes. And there we go, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so Ubuntu finally booted. And uh, what we're going to do in here is go to uh, System, Administrator, and Gparted. If you're using a newer version of Ubuntu, of course, you'll just search in the dash for Gparted. Um, and Gparted is the um, partition manager, or disk manager, that um, comes with the live editions of Ubuntu. Um, I don't believe it's installed by default if you actually install Ubuntu, but on all the live CDs it's there, and it is absolutely great. Um, so we're going to switch to drive B, which is our new drive, and as you can see we have all this unallocated space. And this is what was cloned over. So what we're going to do is click resize up here. And we're just going to grab this and drag it all the way over so that we have a zero both before and after. And we're going to go resize, sit down there, and then all we have to do is go up here and click apply. Apply again. And it shouldn't take hardly any time at all. It's really quick usually. So uh, we'll kind of see. Oh, well, there you go. That's how quick it is. <laughs> so after that, um, we should be good to go. I'm actually going to look in um, disk utility here. And here's our drive. And, um, you see it's 250 gig. Uh, everything looks to be fine. This it has a few bad sectors, but it's nothing I'm too worried about because, like I said, the drive's not really holding super sensitive information. It's just kind of a place to store a few files um, and share them over the network, of course. So let's actually open the drive. Now it should be this one. And there you go, all my files are there. Now I realized I could have done this by simply just freaking formatting the drive and copying everything over, but uh, you know, then I wouldn't have got to make I wouldn't have got to make a video about um, clone hard drives for you guys. So yeah, um, that's all there is to it. Oh, one more thing: if you're cloning a Windows drive or a, um, a drive with Windows installed on it, 
you'll have you'll probably have to go in um, after you resize the drive you'll have to boot to your installation CD your Windows installation CD and um, when it comes up and asks you what you want to do you have to go to the bottom left and click repair your computer and then um, let it search for errors on your Windows installation and repair them if that doesn't work like the automatic solution you'll have to go back in and then go to the command prompt and type bootrec space slash fix mbr and press enter and then after that type bootrec space slash fix boot and press enter again and after that you should be able to reboot and get back into the windows um i don't usually clone windows drives though because it's just kind of an iffy thing sometimes sometimes it'll work flawlessly um other times i've had it work flawlessly and then I get into Windows and Windows is not activated anymore and it refuses to activate or to activate and then other times I've had it where I've done it um, it wouldn't boot so I'd go in and do boot repair reboot and it just re would refuse to boot so I kinda try to stay away from uh, cloning Windows drives but cloning Linux drives or Windows that have or Windows Drives that have Linux installed on them is uh, really easy and works usually flawlessly. Um, and you usually don't have to mess around with um, repairing the bootloader or anything. Uh, it usually just works right out of the box. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to cloning drives. You may want to try a newer version of Clonezilla than what I have. That will probably fix that um, that clone failed error that I get after I clone a drive every time. Um, it's never really bothered me too much though because you can see it always works fine. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.